So as promised, today, instead of doing another super stew, we're going to make something a little different. We're going to make some super quick and easy meatloaf. This is not going to be from scratch, uh, so bear with me on that. But this is the type of thing that it's going to take you all of about 10 minutes of prep. And that's probably on the, the heavy side. Um, and then uh, about an hour and a half or so, um, you know, depending on what size uh, meatloaf you make uh, in the oven at 350. So with that, uh, first of all, you're going to want to get your oven uh, up to 350. So let's go ahead and get that going. And while we're doing that, you can see right here, I've got what looks to be like way more than about one and a half pounds of meat. And that's because it is. So I'm going to make a double batch here while I'm at it. It's just as easy to make a double batch as it is a single batch. So that's what we're going for. So instead of the one and a half pounds of ground chuck that it calls for in the recipe, what I have here is three pounds. So what you're going to see me pour into here uh, throughout this is double all of the ingredients that you see down in the description. So with that said, let's get this out of the way, uh, at least off to the side. So first off, because I want to dirty as few things as possible, uh, we'll go with the oats. We're going to start with those before the wet ingredients so that the oats don't stick to the sides. So we're going to try and dirty as few things as possible here. So we're going to need, again, since this is a double batch, we're going to need three cups of these oats. And in this case, what you want are the minute oats, the quick cook oats, um, because they're not going to spend a ton of time in the oven. There's two. And one. Got lucky, didn't we? All right, just enough. So next up, we need some milk. And again, double batch here. So instead of a quarter cup, we're going to need a half a cup. And I wanna start with the milk because it's easier to measure uh, by itself in there. So there's a half a cup. Next up, we're gonna need a little bit of ketchup. All right, so we need, again, two cups of ketchup instead of one cup. So we're at a half a cup now. So, and the kid goes running through. Apparently she's angry. All right. So that is uh, one cup right now. And what I'm going to do, we'll just go ahead and put in the, uh, the other half. All right, so that is one and a half. Um, also, what we're gonna need, once we get this in here, shake out as much of that as possible. We need that one more half of a cup. All right, so there's the other half cup. So next up, a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce. We've got that in there now. Then we also need uh, six eggs. Again, six instead of the, the three that it calls for. Move this to the center again. All right, close enough. I'm actually gonna go ahead and crack the eggs in here so that we can uh, so that we can mix them up just a little bit. You don't need to beat them a ton, um, but this will be a little bit easier than trying to break them up completely uh, with our fingers. Okay, there the eggs are. We're just gonna give these a quick stir. We're just gonna break the yolks up really more than anything. just so that when we mix everything together, it's a somewhat even distribution. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right, that's good. I'm gonna pour all of this in. Now, before I get my hands in all of this and get them all uh, disgusting, we're going to get our uh, Pyrex dish and we're gonna spray that with some nonstick spray. It's not important that you do that, it's just that it's gonna make cleanup a whole heck of a lot easier. So I'm gonna get this guy uh, here in the middle, I'm gonna go spray that pan, and then I'll come back and we'll get this all mixed up. Okay, 
we've got the panel nice and sprayed. Uh, one of the tricks with that, uh, one of the tricks with spraying the pan, you can either do it in the dishwasher, assuming the dishwasher is not clean, um, but into a dirty dishwasher where it's all going to get washed down the drain or over top of your sink so you're not making a big mess. Um, and so the reason we did that was before we got our hands dirty, we didn't get the, uh, uh, the cooking spray and everything all disgusting. So the last ingredient uh, left here is going to be some onion soup mix. Again, this is why I called it quick and easy. Uh, this way you don't have to measure anything out really than, uh, besides a couple of those ingredients we just did. But here's what I use. Use whatever you want. It's, it's just a standard onion soup mix. Uh, it comes in these little packages like this. Again, we're using two because we're making a double batch. Otherwise, you would just use the one. But this is going to have a lot of those spices in it uh, already. That onion flavor is going to be in there. It just makes it a heck of a lot easier. So now the fun part, get your hands dirty. Just get in here and mix it all up. You're not trying to make a uh, perfect batter here, so it doesn't have to be uh, completely mixed up and homogenous, but you don't want any huge pockets of meat um, that don't have any of the flavorings in them. Uh, it's not going to taste like a meatball if you do that. It's just going to be sort of bland and, and, uh, and not very flavorful. So with that, let's just dig in. Alright, that's it. That's as mixed as it needs to be. You may have noticed I'm not wearing my ring and I did take my watch off. That's just to make clean up a little easier. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it in the pan. We're just going to create uh, a little bit of a loaf shape as best we can. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Not looking for something that's really high. You may have also noticed that I didn't use an actual loaf pan. So instead of a loaf pan, I've used something that's a little bit more open. And that is because it's going to give the fat somewhere to go. Don't get me wrong, love fat. There's a reason we're using chuck in here and we're not using, uh, you know, 90-10 sirloin or, you know, you know 93-97, um, you know, sirloin or, or even bison. Um, uh, so I just, I don't want it to be completely bathed in its own um, uh, fat. So uh, we're going to get plenty of fat in this. And then we're also on the sides, we're going to make... Um, some mashed potatoes and gravy as well. But this is all you're looking for. You're just looking to get this in here in a rectangular shape, giving it a little bit of room on the sides here. Uh, and that's it. So, oven is uh, preheated to 350. I'm going to wash my hands and I'm going to get it in there. Again, since this is a double batch, this may take us a little bit more than that hour and a half. I'm guessing more like about an hour and 40 minutes, hour and 45. Uh, but we'll check it along the way. Uh, all you're really looking for is getting the uh, uh, the middle of this to no longer be pink. All right, gonna wash my hands and get it in the oven. Uh, we'll check back when it's finished. You can get a sense of what that looks like right there. It's been about a half an hour. Uh, we'll go ahead and keep this closed up. No reason to keep it uh, open and let too much heat out. It's not gonna be super picky because again, we're not baking anything, but all right, we'll be back in another half hour to check on it. All right, it's been another half hour and it's so we're up to about an hour total now. Here's what it looks like. Again, we're gonna go ahead and get this shut. We'll check on it again in an hour and a half. My guess is it's still gonna need a little bit of extra time though. It's been an hour and a half and we're looking pretty good. We do need a few more minutes uh, to get some browning that we wanna see on here. That's gonna take about 15 more minutes. So we'll go ahead and give it that and we'll come back and take a look at it next to all of the sides. All right, all in cooking time ended up being about that hour and 45 minutes, hour and 50 minutes. And it's looking pretty good. You can see we've got some browning, but we don't have it uh, coated in charred meat on the top. So it's looking fairly good there. Uh, you can also see that we've got some steaming hot gravy as well as some mashed potatoes. So the mashed potatoes, super easy. Tossed in five or six uh, medium-sized potatoes, peeled uh, and, and diced up uh, you know, around a half inch, three-quarter inch into some boiling water until they were tender. And then just mashed them up with a little bit of butter uh, is as well as some milk. Uh, if you've got sour cream, which I happen to have at this time, uh, toss some of that in as well. It just makes it a little bit creamier. It's, it's kind of nice, but not imperative. 
Uh, and again, we said this was going to be quick and easy. So the gravy is just out of a packet. Uh, you can do it the hard way if you want more power to you, but this meal was intended to be more just a quick and dirty feel good meal. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. If there was something you didn't like, feel free to put it in the comments. Have a good one.